Welcome back, Mr. Matthias Emeribe joins us now. He is a legal practitioner. To take a look at a slew of some legal development uh, over time, even the forthcoming or some decisions that will be coming up much later, I will tell you about some of those. Good morning. Uh, thank you for coming on today. Thank you. Let's start off with uh, what has happened, right, from Friday then uh, up until yesterday. Uh, all of those judgments now, notwithstanding, people already have the impression uh, about the judiciary because, rightly or wrongly, it is what it is. Uh, but from your perspective, having seen the way those judgments have gone, uh, start from that of Imo and then yesterday, what was your impression about how they all went out? Did you think that, wait a minute, some things didn't go right somewhere? And where could that be? <coughs> well, I will simply say that um, the judgment we saw from Friday to, until yesterday we are not a surprise. As against what we saw on Tuesday, that has to do with uh, the Imo State governorship uh, election. That's on Friday. No, it was Tuesday. Tuesday was Imo State governorship election. The uh, last week, I mean on Monday mm -hmm. and yesterday, sorry, because Friday wasn't the judgment for Imo State. It was Tuesday. That was when it was given on the 14th, so to say. Then yesterday. You sure for that? Yes. Okay, they'll just check out. Well, go yes. ahead. It was given on the 14th. Now, this Friday was supposed to be the expiring date. That was supposed to be the 60th day for the judgment. Why for the other ones, talking about Monday and Tuesday, the other judgment went, it was in a way that was expected generally, so to speak. But for that of Imo, I think it is a very curious one. Curious in the sense that, well, since the Supreme Court presently has not given its reason, my problem here is that whether that reason will still be given, whether the court in question will still have the jurisdiction with the greatest respect to the, to the court to still go ahead and give the reason. Why I say this is because, one, the provision of uh, Section 285, subsection 7 and 8 of the 1999 Constitution as amended had been variously interpreted by the same Supreme Court as to its application. Because it was tested, that was when that amendment was done, the first alteration was done, or amendment was done, in 2010 through 2011, where Section 285 was, there was an insertion of some other provision under Section 285. And which requires that, on appeal, the judgment of the court hearing the appeal can be given and reason result later. Now, it was tested in the case of Abubakar and some others and Nasamu. That was in Kebi. It was a Kebi case. And I know that the lawyer that actually dealt with that matter was uh, uh, Kola Wuden, the leader senior advocate. He argued that the Court of Appeal, on giving his judgment in respect of that matter, reserved his reason outside the 60 days as provided by law. Now, that was subjected to, that was the first time it went to, you know, legal scrutiny by the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court said, no, that your reason and decision must come within the time. That is what makes it a judgment. You will not just give a decision and then reserve the reason thereafter within the constitutional provision as provided. Because the law was clear when they were interpreting it, that if you must give your reason concerning the decision, it must fall within the 60 days as provided under the Constitution, because they themselves are bound by the Constitution. I, I hope you agree. He said, except until there's a statute or the Constitution itself provided an extension or an exception. But since that was not done, I'm surprised that as we speak, because for the Imo State Governorship, for instance, we may not fault the judgment as given on that 14th because, according to them, the reason is not on all fours with what you have in the other cases that just came up yesterday, talking about Monday and Tuesday, so to say, because those ones are talking of overvoting, irregularities, and so on and so forth. But in the case of Imo State, the singular issue for determination, basically, which, of course, the court felt that hope brought was the issue of exclusion of results. And 
Having cited the Ajaxi's case and the Omobori Owo's case, talking about the CCONO's case and the Ajaxi's case, using that simple position, all you need to do, just stand out the result you said that was excluded. And that's also the burden is not as heavy as where you have alleged there was fraud. So that was simply, but I was thinking that in giving that position, bearing in mind that perhaps the 60th day will probably elapse by 17th of, unless I'm mistaken, so to speak. But if that is the case, it means that as it stands, going by the Supreme Court judgment and following that position, there's no judgment. So does that suggest Because that? they heard that but if the judgment and the reason so is not given within that time, yeah. it is a nullity. If that were the case, yes. what does that what does this then mean? The effect, therefore, will mean that we are leaning back to the Court of Appeal judgment where there is four to one. <laughs> well, that's the implication. Any precedence to this? Except I will be corrected as long as because this is the authority. And it was has, even has this happened before. I am telling you, when, when it has happened before, the Supreme Court, it is the basis upon which the Supreme Court can be approached because it's a legal position. Because I mean, because only, the same only, Supreme only Court, I'm coming, sir. I'm coming, sir. The same Supreme Court, mm -hmm. in the case of PDP versus Rocha or Sukurocha, they made that same clarification where the judgment of the Court of Appeal was given on the 6th of January, 2012. And they reserved their ruling, I mean, their reason, for the 24th of January, 2012. Mm -hmm. The Supreme Court, it was made up of, the Chief Justice was even, in the, in the, the current Chief Justice of the Federation was in that matter, and they agreed with the reasoning of the court there, where the Supreme Court said they don't have jurisdiction to hear this appeal any longer because the reason and the decision, they are one and the same. So is this an opinion shared by you know, other legal practitioners or this is just solely your own calculation? Well, well it is my own, basically, when you say it is my an opinion shared by legal, it is the law as given by the Supreme Court because they are the final, the, I would call the Supreme Court the final word of the law. So if they have given it, the question is that, are they bound by it? Because they have stated clearly that the, when the Constitution provides time, it's like a, jog, a rock of what, g -bot, you cannot move it. You can't even extend it. But no, except but the legislature that made it will be the one okay, that the will time. make another one. Exactly. Yeah. Does this then mean that the Supreme Court is setting a new precedence? Well, the Supreme Court... Because court, you, you said, if you said there is no judgment already, this judgment of the Supreme Court has, has been given effect. You know, so does this then mean, given that the judgment has been given, we're waiting for the reason, does this then mean that the Supreme Court is setting a new precedent? If I were the legal team, with the greatest respect, because we are in a system where we deal with civility, so to say, in other words, organization, and in a democracy in particular, the only means by which we have been made to understand that we can live together, as it were, is through a legal or civil means, as the case may be. Now, there is no other way that we can correct or begin to say, okay, with the greatest respect to the learned justices of the Supreme Court, because they may have given a fantastic decision on the 14th, bearing in mind the issue of exclusionism, even though probably for some of us, we may have a reservation. But the truth remains that if they have laid the position of the law, Clearly, expectedly, they have made us to understand that that remains what the law. And that is the proper interpretation they gave to the Constitution, as it were. Because for the first time, because in that 2012, that was the first time the provision of 285, subsection 7 and subsection 8, was being what? Tested. Because that was then the issue of 60 days, how is it going to apply? The issue of 180 days, how is it going to apply? And they were unequivocal in their position concerning the application of the 60 days word rule. So if the reason doesn't come within the ambit of the time they have given their decision with the greatest respect, they, by their own language, they, they said there is no word decision and therefore whatever may have been done is null and word. Void. So what then is the implication of this? The judgment has been given. Yes. It has been activated. Does this then mean 
that there is a new precedence being set by the Supreme Court or the Supreme Court is in violation of the law. With the greatest respect, nobody will tell you that the Supreme Court is in violation of the law because according to their words or the language they use in uh, Adego Kit and Adesoya, that they are not, they are, I mean, they are final. They are not final because of infallibility. They are infallible because of their finality. So not that they are saying they are not infallible by virtue of that statement. But they are simply saying, telling you that even if they are infallible, you will hardly do anything about it because they have given their final word of it. And they are the last, the last bus stop. But I think with the greatest respect, even within the provision of their rules, it gives room for parties who feel aggrieved by what may have happened to approach them on some other grounds. Now, the ultimate question may be that, OK, if the Supreme Court has given a judgment within, because as it stands, if they have not given their reason, and they still must still give the reason for the judgment, if somebody is telling me that they are functions of it at the time they gave their judgment, on what basis would they not come back to not give reason? If you are functions of future, you can't give reason again now concerning it. So if they will still have to give reason, it still gives room for the lawyers in question to approach the court and say, please, since you have not given your reason, please, I would like you to consider not even going ahead because of A, B, C, or D, or because of these authorities. So it may probably give them the opportunity to now address that position as to say, in this case, this authority will not apply or it will apply. So we will not know whether they are bound by this constitution or not. Because you cannot, I mean, uh, after giving your position that every court, because the language was caught, must be bound, must be bound, because the provision of that is says tribunal or court when you are going on appeal. So by implication, the Supreme Court is a court for this purpose, though the final court that makes the law. Just to be clear, yes. you're saying that the decision was given within the 60-day time frame, is that what you're saying? But uh -huh. the reason was not given or has not been given within the 60-day time frame. Is that what you're saying? That is what I'm saying, that if the reason wasn't given within the 60-day time limit, then it is not longer binding. But the judgment binding. was given within the time frame. It is more like an order. Nobody calls it. A judgment must contain about six elements. You it have, was used, you have used the term judgment it was, interchangeably. Yes, yes, it was described, it was stated in that very case, that's PDP versus Rucha Sukorcha, by his lordship, uh, uh, Adeke, who try who lay down what a true judgment must constitute, amongst which are what you must first of all, as a court, give the facts of the case. Number two, the court in question must proceed to appraise the fact as given by the parties. Number three, you must analyze the cases. Cited by the word by the parties. Number four, you must also give the applicable laws, the applicable and relevant laws that were cited or given by the parties. All within the 60 day time frame. Y yes. Number five, you must proceed to make a finding of fact and conclusion in that same judgment. And then finally, the court must then proceed further to now state his own position, his reason, that is, for coming either to agree or not to agree as to win. So when these things have not been done, the judgment is not complete. Because that is simply so, what it analyzed in that very case of, of PDP and Ruchas Okorocha. On what basis then? Yes. Uh, because if whoever approaches the Supreme Court saying, well, since you've not given your reason, can you consider this? You just said now that the judgment is incomplete. Yes, so yes. will they be approaching the court based on an incomplete I think, judgment? I, yes, they can. They can approach the court for the court to pronounce that, based on this, the court of appeal position still stands. Even though the reason has not been reduced. Because if they say... They, they can say that because what they are saying is incomplete. Yes, please. If you don't have the full fact of the matter, how do you approach the court when you don't have the full no, fact? No, no, no. It's the full fact for this purpose. That is what I mean. To the extent that you say it's incomplete. I said the full... Yes. It's incomplete. Yeah. It, will, it will be incomplete if the reasons have not been given. Which is the case that is now. What makes it, that is what makes it... That's exactly the case. So how, do one, how does one then approach You the will court approach the court to raise... You are approaching the court with a question before the Supreme Court. In view of the fact 
On an incomplete fact. Yes. In view of the fact, that is, you are submitting a question to the court, that in view of section 285, subsection 7 and 8, and in view of the authority as cited in the case of which I mentioned, Abubakar and Nasamu, in the case of PDP and uh, Okorocha, can this court still regard the judgment it gave on the 14th? Are you getting what I'm saying? As being valid and subsisting? That's the language. And if it's not valid and subsisting, what is the effect? What will be the consequence? It means that we are leaning back to the judgment that was given fully with the reasons of the one of Court of Appeal. Does that mean that you are saying that the, there's a possibility of the Supreme Court reversing itself? Well, let me not use the word whether it's going to reverse, but the court can still reverse itself, depending once it discovers reverse that it's it has judgments. Said. Yes, it can reverse itself. There's no crime in doing that. Once it discovers, because even in that very case I mentioned, I think okay. He said once the court discovers a mistake, he can correct itself. So he, it's better to correct an injustice than to allow it to continue. So the Supreme, that's, that's, it, it, it was in that case. It's still possible for what you are saying by implication. You are saying that it is still possible for the Supreme Court to pronounce and say, uh, "In my Emeka view, he your heart is should be governor, and we should remove." Usodima. It is possible because of the position of the law that I've just stated. Based Except the lordships, the lordships have not seen it. But I'm saying that if the lordships, the law lords, as they are have realized this position because it is their own judgment. Is this not just based on your interpretation of the law? Because some other people might see it differently. Okay. Now, remember yesterday, with due respect, a learned senior advocate was uh, on your studio in Abuja. That is uh, uh, Jubri Lokudekba. There was a question. I believe you are the one that put that question to him. That, look, is there no time that he can give his reason? You know, I th I, with due respect, I saw the difficulty in the way he answered. He said he can give the reason. No, there must be time. If going by what the Supreme Court has said in the case I've just cited before you, and it's a reported case. So, did you uh, reference Section 285 yes. in this matter? So, what happens to Section 285D in this case? 285D. There's not like 285D. When, when it says that um, the courts, in all final appeals from the election tribunal. Except you are reading the unamended uh, copy. If it's the amended one. Yeah, but this is, a, a, this is the amended one, isn't it? Ah. When it well, because when the lawyers have also, they are of the opinion yes, well. that, wait a minute, this thing, first of all, if it says the court in all final appeals from an election tribunal... Yes, can reserve. Court. Yes, can reserve. That's yeah, so, what I'm telling you that was submitted. Yeah, let me finish it. When it says the court may adopt the practice of first giving its decision... I agree. ...and reserving the reasons, therefore, to a later date... I agree. There's no doubt. It's nice not to know that. That's what I said. That was what was submitted. Uh -huh. That's what I'm interpreting to you. I mean, giving you the, the reason... I mean, the interpretation now. That provision of the law, that is... and. That's why I said it's under section 285, subsection 8. So 285, sub 8. Now, that provision, that was a question. Is there a time frame to that later date, according to the Constitution? That's what I'm telling you. That, the, that was what was submitted before the court. Because I said that be, this provision, the Court of Appeal had felt, in the case of that, the case I cited to you, Al-Bubakar and Nasamu, where it was in 2012 that the case was decided, where the Court of Appeal was working under the belief that having given his judgment then, earlier, are you getting me in respect of the matter? He can give his reason after 60 days. Supreme Court say, uh, 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 you cannot do that. But that was for the Court of Appeal, not for the Supreme Court. But if you go by the wordings, unfortunately I'm not here with my, with my head, the language of the Supreme Court did not give room for exception. In fact, the Supreme Court themselves said that the only way the exception will arise is if the concern itself made a provision for extension. But we know that the courts are not equal, as it were. The Court of Appeal is not equal. I to am not the disputing that. Nobody is so, arguing so that. So the Supreme Court is a court of finality. So, yes. I mean, understanding that, can that not render that particular, you know, that interpretation you have given? Can, that, can it not render it null and void? Is it possible if you render it null and void, you are by implication saying that this concern does not suffice? You can't, you, it, 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 it is something that is very strong, and I keep saying that, except we, we, they, 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 we, we want to 
ignore what the law has said. Which is why I asked the question that you haven't yeah. quite answered. Okay. Is the Supreme Court by this position setting a new precedence? You know, because this question has not been submitted to it. When I say submitted, in respect of what has happened now, for the Supreme Court to now either make a position, either saying that, look, by what I have seen, yes, the judgment that we gave no longer stands. It has not been submitted. Nobody has dared or attempted to challenge it. So, why so I... in doing that, that is why, as a public analyst, and by virtue of the fact that the judgment has been given already, we are now open to make some critique concerning it, positive or negative as the case may be, but with a more progressive position. That is why I have decided, I have raised it, so that it is something or a legal mind can engage itself in. All right, let's see if we could talk about this as well. Uh, maybe we can come back to this if some other <laughs> points take out because uh, this perspective of yours now, uh, well, we'll see how people respond to it. By all means, you can send us your thoughts on what you think of Mr. Meribe's submissions about this perspective of Using what... those authorities because once you read those authorities, yeah. they are very clear. All right, they heard you. But then this Saturday, there will be uh, this rerun election in Akwai Bom Northeast. Uh, the senatorial election, which involves uh, Senator Kwabi. Yeah. But it, it then turns out, because if initially he says, look, I'm not going to participate in these elections because others can go ahead and participate. And then an exposition, because now we understand that the courts have said, no, um, you can't actually withdraw. You have to participate in the election. Of course, what appears, the way it comes across naturally to people is that, look, is this thing by force? If he says he doesn't want to run, what's wrong in that? No, you know, it's not by force, but the thing is that uh, by the law, and that is why we are saying when we operate by law, things will go well. By the law, the time for him to withdraw had what? Had lapsed. The only thing, that is why there was this amendment that was done. If you remember what happened in the Fali case case, talking about the then governor who died in the currency of the election itself. And so there was confusion. So because of that, after the Supreme Court judgment, uh -huh. there was need for amendment to be done, which provides that if such happens, the party that produces the person will be given time to go and do under primaries and produce before the listing will be concluded. Now, having said that, in the case of Aquabio, so to say, we are not talking of death here that will enable him to say, Okay, some other person will come in. He's still alive. It's not that circumstances had made it probably on his own path, by way of his own decision, to say he doesn't want to what, proceed any longer. I am withdrawing. So, as it stands, in the eye of the law, Akbabio is still what, in the contest. So, the letter that he wrote asking that he be withdrawn is of no moment, by virtue, because the 45 days as provided by the law has lapsed. So to say, because whatever order the court has given is an order for the parties who were there contesting it to go. After all, why then did the court make the order? If he knew that at the time he went to court, he did not, all he needed to do was to file in a withdrawal, I mean, uh, uh, file his uh, application that is no longer continue with the case. And the, case, the court will strike it out. So there won't have been need to say, let us do a little. So what then is it that they want to achieve? By now coming up to say, okay, I'm withdrawing, and therefore I need some other person that will probably take over. It's okay. not done anyway. We'll, we'll talk about this uh, when we come back in just a moment. Stay with us. All right, welcome back. Well, uh, Mr. Meribe, uh, is of the opinion that uh, the Supreme Court ruling concerning the Imo governorship election appeal is to the extent that they didn't stick with uh, given the reason within a certain 60-day period is, uh, I hope I'm right in your words, invalid, meaning they have to revert to the Court of Appeal decision. He says, uh, yes, you can give the judgment within that time frame, but insofar as the reason have not been given, parties mm -hmm. aggrieved may approach the Supreme Court saying, look, based on this, we think there's been an error somewhere. That's the point you're making, isn't yeah. it? All right, so uh, we'll um, go ahead and see if, uh, well, we, we do have uh, Mr. Fidel Albert 
He's, he's a legal practitioner. I think he joins us on the phone this morning. Good morning, Mr. Bill, but um, I haven't, I'm not sure. Did you get the perspective of Mr. Mary Bay and what do you think about it concerning the Imo governorship election? Good morning. Um, nice to, to have me calling. Um, I, 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 from what I understand, the discussion is revolving about the... Uh, the, the not not giving of reasons uh, uh, that uh, that premise the decision of the Supreme Court up till today. Do I do I understand that properly? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't think the uh, I wouldn't say that the uh, the judgment is invalid because reasons have not been given. I think these issues have come up previously uh, at the Supreme Court and there are decisions on it. Um, which, of course, is binding on us as legal practitioners giving commentaries and, and, and other courts. Let us not forget that the Supreme Court is the highest, uh, is the a, is a, is a apex court. Um, what the Supreme Court has said is, in previous cases, is that uh, they are not, as the apex court, they are not bound by that timeline. Um, I want you to, to, I want us to remember that there, there are certain things that are inserted in the Constitution. For example, if you recall the, the Wamako case in, in Sokoto, at the time, the Supreme Court had that appeal come, come to it to, to give uh, its, uh, its decision on it. The Supreme Court constitutionally did not have the jurisdiction to, to hear appeals or the governorship election petitions, but they did. Constitutionally, they didn't have the power, but they said they were doing it under their inherent jurisdiction. And they gave the, uh, the, the judgment. That judgment is binding till today, despite uh, notwithstanding that constitutionally they did not have the power. It was after then that the constitution was amended to give Supreme Court. Um, um, so, yes, even though there is a, a time limit in the constitution for the giving of decisions, if the Supreme Court has said that the time limit is not binding to it because it's apex, apex court, that that is where we stand. That is what binds everybody. There is no you you cannot uh, uh, take that decision to any way for review because they are the last and the, uh, the final arbiter in the in the judicial process. So that is my view. I I, I do not believe that the the the, uh, the decision is invalid just because they have not given the reason today. Um, so 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 that that is where that is, that is where I anchor my, my own views. All right, but uh, he also did suggest that parties can actually uh, approach the Supreme Court, even though the reasons have not been adduced, citing one or two things. Uh, can, do you, what, can, can that actually happen pending I don't, the I, full... I, I, yes, go ahead. I absolutely don't believe that, that you can approach the Supreme Court again. You see, the Supreme Court has stated over and over again um, the, the instances where its decisions can be reviewed. If there is a clerical error, if there is a if there is a, a slip, yes, you can go back to to to, uh, to the Supreme Court to to review the decision, not review the merit of the decision, but to to correct the the, mis the mistake. But here we have a substantive decision. In, in any event, if you don't even have the reasons, what, on what basis are you going to challenge it? It's going to be difficult. Then even if you had the reason, you cannot go back to the Supreme Court to set aside um, um, its decision. That, that, uh, several um, uh, cases have come away, parties have tried to do that, and the Supreme Court has in very clear terms of breaded, of breaded the practice. It, it, I, for me, I don't think it's possible. What has been done has been done. Uh, we just have to find a way to, uh, to accept it and to move forward. All right, uh, Mr. Fidel Abbott, thank you for your thoughts this morning. Very grateful. Thank you very much, yeah. Well, it's always the case with lawyers. Uh, after all, that's why they're lawyers. Uh, if there's lawyers there, they have to approach the courts. So until the courts decide, decide otherwise, the matter will keep going back and forth on that particular one. Well, um, uh, Fidel has given his uh, opinion. I feel with the greatest respect that um, even if the Supreme Court will say no, we are not going to be bound by the time as provided under 
the provision of the law. The simple question you ask is, why then, because if they are not bound, they can therefore stay on without being bound by the 60-day rule to give the judgment. If you understand the point, I make it. If going by what Fidel is saying, that uh, they can, uh, they don't think that can is possible, or you cannot approach them on that. Then the 60-day rule provided by the constitution would therefore, by implication, not bound since they are the final court and nobody can appeal. I, I don't know what, what, whether you are getting what you know. What you ask yourself the question: If they fail to give their judgment, like the Imo state, they say now, they now fail to give their judgment within the time, because you ask yourself, okay, then why be in the hurry to give it within the 60 days? If you understand the point I'm saying, it is because of the constitution. If, if they if they feel that the constitution is not binding, so to say, would they proceed to not give that? I mean, the judgment within the 60 days. <laughs> so if he says that you can't, they cannot. You can't. I mean, it's a question. After all, we are developing the law. So let them, on their own, now pronounce that no. The issue of reason and this is not for them. It is for the lower court, but. Going by what they said, because in that case, like I said, talking about the PDP and Rochas, Supreme Court said, unless, unless there is a constitutional provision which gives room for extension, All right. or a statutory provision that gives room for extension. Okay. If they say that, what is that supposed to mean? Meaning that generally, we are bound to work within the 60 days rule. OK, we'll move on to the, let's get back. Yeah, go ahead. You know, I, I was going to bring in what we were discussing. I, I know this will be an ongoing conversation, oh. but, you know, just before the break, we, we talked about the, the election, the coming election in Akwaibam Southwest Senatorial uh, District, and I foresee something that might happen. So, on one hand, will the, the name of, or the party of uh, uh, Godzilla Pabio be on the ballot paper? Yes. It will be. So, in the event that he gets the highest votes, what happens? So be it. <laughs> they will pronounce him as such. Notwithstanding that he has written his letter of withdrawal. So he because chooses? it is a party do understand, going by uh, you know, the, the pronouncement of the court, it is a party because you can only vie through the instrumentality of what a party. So it's a party that goes into the election. So in the event that he chooses to remain a minister, what happens then to that to that position? The that implication seat? is that there will be a general election for that place, meaning that he doesn't want to go in. If he fails, because if he chooses to be a minister. Because the only way you can even decide to say the, the, his position will no longer, I mean, is vacant, is when, after the time required by law for him to come to the Senate and take his position, he fails, then the, that place will be declared uh, vacant. And therefore, a new election will be now conducted for all the parties. So we'll have to do that whole cycle again, per adventure. This that is the way it, you can't change it. That's the only way it is. The, I, I, I'm, I'm a little confused. Don't be confused. I'm it, saying let, let me, let me, let me. Okay. The, the, it's the party that goes into the election. Yes. The representative of the party is writ, wrote officially to the party and Good. says, I do not want to represent the party anymore. Yes. The party still goes into the election anyway. Yes. So the party does not withdraw its candidature from the election. Yes. Now the individual is saying, he, can, he doesn't the want election, to. Okay, so how, why is it that the party cannot substitute? No, you, that's why I said the, the substitution, time for substitution has already lapsed. But it's not the individual that goes into the election. It's yeah. the party. It's the person that you are presenting. Why are we talking of primaries? Why is it that in Zamfara, for instance, the whole primaries were cancelled? <laughs> or in reverse, as the case may be. It's not the individual that went to it because they didn't do it well. That's why it was cancelled. So what gives life to the party in that election is the individual. So in the eye of the law, Gosuna Kwabio is still the individual that is representing the APC. And therefore, APC must still be in the ballot. Quite interesting days ahead for this, <laughs> for this particular one. Because people will ask, so does it then, is it then fair on the people of, for example, you know, that district that for that period to go through that cycle just per adventure, his party wins. They'll so yeah. have to go through that cycle yet again. And for that period, they don't have representation in the National Assembly. And people wonder, so, I mean, the law is made for the people, not people for the well, law. So, well, unfortunately, there's nothing you and I can do about it. That is the way it is. But isn't this a little tricky? Because, I mean, yes, we know that Akwaibum has uh, 31 local government areas. Now, this Northwest Senatorial District has got 10 local government areas. Yes. And Results of nine local government areas were preserved. 
by the appeal, yes. and then in that same breath, the uh, PDB candidate, the senatorial candidate, is leading with, uh, I think, uh, 38,000 votes, yeah. which is not in excess of the register. Mm. Uh, and then you have about 105,555 registered voters. Yes. But then, after the election and everything was collated, like Senator Kwabi went to court saying 61,339 of his votes were not collated. Yeah. And at INEC, eventually, they said, look, no, those results didn't emanate from us. Mm. And so, because if they had collated those results, which is similar to that of Imo, Imo. he mm. would have obtained and won those particular elections. Yes. So, uh, the court, they were initially, they were really angry, they wanted, but now, here we are now, yes. about this result. So, we've seen those similarities and the way the court ruled yes. in those particular cases. Mm. So, do you see any similarities or inconsistencies in those in, in that breath? You, you know, um, yeah, you know, every 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 case, every case is taken on its merits. In other words, they are on all fours with their own peculiar circumstances. Now, yes, on the face of it, the issue of exclusion of results in the total collision of the result of the entire senatorial district is probably what Akpabiu went to do. But you will realize that perhaps what one of the things that probably may set it apart or different is that that's why I say it's always good to read the reasons. Because in the reasons, the facts will be you know clear. Akpabio was equally arguing on the on on uh, what you may call the 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 anomalies that were you know, that, that came up in that election itself, in, especially in that senatorial uh, district. So, in other words, the Court of Appeal made a finding that all the parties agreed that there were violence. And you know, the, the courts, the order they rerun, not based on yeah. what Senator Kwame presented, but based on how INEC presented, as we understand. Yes, of course. Saying that yes. there were, there were violence. Violence, exactly. violence in that Yes, yes. So, so that's why I said all the parties agreed that there were violence, which means it is in tandem with the report of INEC. Yeah, but even if all the parties didn't yeah. agree, mm. if the court had ruled, that was going to be it. I'm saying that by virtue of the court's pronouncement, mm -hmm. I'm talk, quoting the court of appeal, yeah, okay. Largely all the parties agreed. So in other words, by that agreement, the court has no choice but to agree that yeah, there's no the, what INEC did was right. So but what, what do you say to those who then suggest that, ah, but wait a minute, if this was the case in this particular scenario, uh, couldn't the same, because they wonder, did INEC approach the Supreme Court or uh, the appeal, or did the Supreme Court consider the appeal in the same breath? Because if INEC had said, look, these results from EMO candidate APC didn't emanate from us, did they provide sufficient grounds to say, look, these are our ballot papers, these are our serial numbers, these are our return officers. They Chamberlain, didn't let, say let me just tell you something. That's why I said we are here to see the full reason by the Supreme Court. Because I'm sure when the reasons come out, so many questions that you are raising will, will, know, will arise. The issue of accreditation, the issue of those who voted, the issue of where the polling units are, the issue of whether there was the required spread. Spread, if you understand what I'm saying. Spread in terms of Having one third in two third. That's a constitutional of requirement. Yeah, of course. Because so all these things will arise. They will come up. But not until the reason. That is the reason why I said, if the provision says give reason with this system, because if this thing has been done with this, it will have been easy for us to now know. Even if we are not still going to change it, as it were. But at least we would have known. But then, when they get in there on Saturday, you know, the president, everybody in security, they've been having meetings, which they usually do. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, let, let me be honest with you. I, the way the election is conducted in Nigeria today, particularly with respect to security agencies, for me, I'm only praying that the words of our leaders will be matched with what action. That's what I would say. Let their the words will be matched with action. Because it appears that when they say A, it's a different thing that we see on the ground. Because what we saw in Kogi, in particular, 
what we saw in Kogi. Well, let's let's wind down now. Did you see any similarity between this particular case in Akwai Bomb and how, remember, Senator Chris Ngigi as well, <laughs> in Anambra, he, the argument went back and forth when he was, at the point, was he going to contest? Wouldn't he contest? He's a serving senator. Any similarities in this case? Well, you know, uh, I wouldn't want to comment on that because, um, wine, I'm not too uh, seized with the full facts of Ndige's case. So whatever I'm going to say will be speculative, and I don't think it... Uh... All right, so uh, we leave it at that point. We thank you for coming on this morning. Uh, uh, we've got uh, Matthias Emeribe, a legal practitioner, giving us his view. We also do thank Mr. Fidel. Well, we'll turn on to our next uh, subject matter now in a moment. Stay with us. Mm -hmm.